Hey there folks, Tim Slate here from the eLearning Designers Academy and Community. Thank you so much for tuning into today's how-to workshop where we're going to be taking a look at how to build a custom menu in Articulate Storyline. Now if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and that bell button below so that you'll get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, make sure to join us inside the eLearning Designers Community. It's completely free and it's a great place where you can connect, network, and learn from others who are also looking to grow their eLearning design skills and careers. Now, if you've never attended or watched one of my how-to workshops before, these are meant to be practical sessions where we take a deep dive into all things e-learning, design and development and instructional design and portfolios and visual design and of course, articulate storyline as we are doing today. Now, if you want to be following along with me, feel free to pause me at any time if I'm moving too fast. Uh, you are welcome to follow along with me as I work through today's session. All right. So here's what we're going to look at today how to build a custom menu in Articulate Storyline. So let's jump into Storyline here. You know, if you're just getting started with Storyline, Storyline offers a lot of features that helps make the design process a little bit easier. So for example, as you're building out your slides, Storyline has a built-in menu in the player that organizes all of your slides and give your, gives your learners a really easy way to navigate your course. This is fantastic if you're building your first project or if it's linear or anything like that. However, as you start you know, advancing your skills in Articulate Storyline, you start developing uh, more unique and interesting and advanced courses, there may be times where you wanna ditch that built-in menu and go with something like this where you have your own custom on-screen menu. And this is really great if you want to create a course that is non-linear, where the learner can go into uh, different sections of a course, uh, whether it's in order or any order that they would like. And of course, you want to build your own custom look and feel. Building your own custom on-screen menu is a great option for that. However, there may be times where you want to control the order in which learners view your content. Maybe you want them to view everything before they get to a course summary and conclusion. And in those instances, there's features in Storyline using triggers and states and, of course, variables where you can actually control how your learners navigate through your course. And you can also control what they can and cannot view based on what they have viewed previously. Now, before I move forward, a couple of quick things. I've talked about before about the pros and cons of creating a lockdown e-learning course. Personally, I'm not a big fan of locking down your courses in a way that forces your learners to view things in a particular order. I'm not a fan of that, but I do recognize there are times where maybe with compliance training or something else, you might need to ensure that learners have viewed everything before they complete the course. And so what we're going to look at today is how you can build a menu like this one, where you have multiple items that the learner has to view. They can view it in any order. Uh, and after they viewed everything, they will be able to uh, complete the course. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. The other thing I want to mention too real quickly is that uh, the stuff that we're going to go through today assumes that you already know some of the basics and the fundamentals of Articulate Storyline. So if you're just getting started with Storyline, by all means, continue watching, but know that I have a whole library of other how-to workshops to help you get up and running with Storyline and a lot of the basic features. So check out the links up here and down below for where to find my full playlist of Articulate Storyline uh, how-to workshops, all right? So let's take a look at this example. Like I said, we have a custom menu here. And as we look at it, uh, just looking at it visually, there's a lot of stuff that's being communicated to me about what the learner can and cannot do, right? We have four menu items. We have one for our customers, our service philosophy, building rapport, and our course summary. And as we look at this, it tells us a lot of stuff about how we can interact with it. So you see I have some grayed out check marks kind of indicating to me that I haven't viewed those items. I have a little lock icon on my course summary indicating that I can't view that yet. You can even see that it's locked down, that button is disabled. And then I have my buttons here, uh, which in total indicates to me I need to view all these sections before I can get to the course summary, right? This is what we're gonna build today. So let's say, for example, I go through our course summary. Here's our sample course. This is just dummy content that I made up. The content doesn't really matter, but we're gonna go through this module one, learn about our customers. Oh, and look, we get to the end of the module and we have an option here to return the main menu. So I'll do that. And you'll see we get a check mark. Our check mark changed from that gray color to that blue color indicating that I viewed it. But my course summary is still locked, right? So I probably need to go visit these other two. So let's go to building rapport. 
like I said, it doesn't matter what order I go through this. Uh, we're gonna learn about building rapport. Oh, look, we're gonna shake hands. Make sure we greet the customer properly. That's important. Cool, we have a little interaction here. Hey, I got that right. That's cool. Uh, and now module three is complete. Okay, let's go back to the main menu. Same thing, look, hey, look, we have a check mark there. So let's do our last one, our service philosophy. Let's learn about that. What is our service philosophy? Well, uh, it's about some important things here, like discovery and comparison and stuff, stuff, stuff. Okay, cool. Ooh, look, a marker, that's fun. Uh, no, gosh, we don't wanna have bad customer service, do we? Let's learn about that. And now we have our module two complete, all right? So I'll return to the main menu. Now let's see what happens in our main menu, right? Hey, look at that. We viewed all three items and now our course summary is unlocked for me. Now I can go to the course summary and go, hey, look, I learned all about our customer service philosophy. Great. Now I can finish the course, all right? So that's what we're gonna learn to build today. We're going to learn how to build a custom menu that allows the learner to navigate your course in any order, uh, but they're gonna be locked out from doing certain things until they viewed everything else, right? And to do that, we're gonna use buttons and triggers and states and more importantly, variables and storylines. So let me close out of this file. I don't need this anymore. And let's go into a practice file. And like I said, I've already built out this course. You know, it's full of dummy content. We're not really looking at the content today. We're just building out the functionality. And you'll see that I've organized my slides into multiple scenes. And for those of you who might be new to Storyline, scenes are just ways to group slides in a meaningful way. Think of it like chapters in a book, right? So I have my first chapter here for my introduction and my main menu. Maybe that's, you know, the introduction to my book. And then I have my next chapter for this module, another chapter for this module, another chapter for this module, and then here's our conclusion, right? Just think of them as chapters, ways to organize your slides and storyline. Now, if I open up slide 1.1 and 1.2 here in our first scene, here's our title screen, right? And when the learner clicks the start button, it takes them to slide 1.2. And this is where we want to build out our main menu. Now, I've already started building out the menu a little bit, right? I've kind of designed the way it looks and feels. It says main menu, learn more about our process. We have our menu items here. This is just text, right? I didn't build out any functionality. These are just text boxes with some lines to kind of create the structure of our menu. I haven't built anything functional here yet. That's what we're gonna start with. And what I want to do is I wanna create first a series of buttons that the learner can click on that when they click on it, it will link them to each of our other sections within our course. And right now these scenes are not linked together. They're just individual scenes, right? So let's go ahead and start by doing that. Let me go back to slide 1.2 where our main menu is. And I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit and let's start by creating uh, a button for uh, the buttons that the learner is going to click on to jump to the different sections within this course, the menu, uh, the buttons for our menu. So in this instance, I'm just going to go to my insert tab and I'll select the button option here. It doesn't matter what button style you use. I'm just going to go with this one here with a rounded rectangle. And I could call these buttons whatever I want. I could say go, learn more, visit. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm just going to call them learn more or something like that. I'll make them about that big. I'm going to move it over here a little bit. I think it's a little too big there. I'll move it a little bit smaller. All right. And I'll type in learn more. That's going to be the text for my button. Actually, I'm going to make it capital. Learn more. So it's really, really clear. Now, I've created my button. This is not how I want my button to look, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stylize my button completely. I'm gonna change the way it looks and feels. I'm also gonna build out the states for my button, and then I'm going to duplicate it for the rest of my buttons. I, I prefer to do that, create one button once and then duplicate it, rather than create each button manually. I'd have to redo all that work, and then that leaves it open for there to be inconsistencies. I'm not a big fan of that. So I'm gonna stylize this button first, and one of the things I like to do is I like to create this inverse look with my buttons. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the button fill to be a white fill. And I'll change the border to be maybe this blue color here. You can make your buttons look however you want. And for the text, I'll make it also that blue color, okay? So that's what I want my button to look like. Now, before I duplicate this for all of my other buttons, I also wanna change and edit and customize the states for this button. Again, if you're new to Storyline, states when it comes to interactive objects like buttons, allow us to create multiple variations of the object that change the way they look and feel depending on how the learner interacts with it. So how do we want the button to look when they hover over it? How do we want it to look when it's disabled, right? That's what we do when we edit our states. So I'll go ahead and select the button, open up my timeline here, 
and go to my states panel here. And you can see we have our button with all the built-in states. Buttons always have built-in states of hover, down, visited, disabled. Now in this example, I'm not gonna use all of these states. So I'm gonna delete some of them just to get them out of the way. And then I'm gonna customize a few other ones, all right? So I'll click edit states. And I'm gonna keep the hover state. We're gonna use that, but I'm not gonna use the down state. So I'm gonna delete that. I just don't think it's necessary. Uh, the down state would be how it looks when the learner has it clicked down on it. It's a very specific state. Visited state, we're not doing a visited state for these buttons. That's how it would look if the learner had clicked on the button. We don't need that. Uh, but I'm gonna use the hover and disabled states in this example. So for my hover state, this is how I want it to look when the learner hovers their mouse cursor over the button. And like I said, I wanna give it an inverse look. This is just a more modern looking way of creating button states. Again, you can make yours look and feel however you want. In this case, I'm gonna inverse it. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna change the button fill. Instead of being white, I'm gonna make it blue. And instead of the text being blue, I'm gonna make it white. So it's quite literally the opposite of what it was, right? So this is what it'll look like. It'll be normal and then hover like that, okay? Now for my disabled state, technically I'm only gonna be using the disabled state on the course summary section of my menu, but I'm gonna go ahead and build in the disabled state uh, for all of my buttons, just in case I might wanna use it for the other menu items for some specific reason. And in this instance, I'm gonna keep it simple, usually from a user interface design standpoint, usually disabled is usually visually represented as it being grayed out. So I'm gonna change the button border to maybe this dark gray color here and the text to that gray color as well. That'll be a good visual indicator that it's grayed out, all right? Uh, and you'll see how the disabled state works here in a few moments. So I've edited and customized my states. I'll go ahead and click done to exit out of editing my states. And now that I've created and stylized the button and I've customized the states for it, now I'm ready to duplicate it. That way I've created one button with one look and feel. I don't have to do that all over again, right? So I'm just going to click on this, do a control C, control V, or you could do a control D to duplicate. I, I prefer to use control C, control V for reasons that make no sense to me. And then I'll do it again. And I'm just gonna create my menu buttons here, right? Easy peasy. And then I'll put one down here. Now, before we move forward, uh, I wanna make sure my buttons are, are perfectly aligned and distributed. I'm one of those people that if something's just a pixel off, I will notice it from a mile away and it drives me insane. And this is where uh, we use our tools to um, align and distribute our objects for us, right? So as we look at this, we can see they aren't all perfectly aligned. This of course summary one's a little bit shifted to the right. And then you can see the spacing between the buttons and those lines is not very even. Uh, that just doesn't make me feel very good inside. Uh, so I'm just going to select all of these and I'll use my align to distribute tools. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to center them like that. So you can see how they kind of adjusted very subtly. And then I'm going to distribute them vertically. It's gonna distribute them evenly amongst themselves, just like that, all right? And it's still not exactly perfect. You see how there's extra space here? Mm -mm. Let's bring this down. And now let's try it. Let's do this. No, eh, that's okay. No, I'm still not liking it. Let's bring that down, bring that up. Maybe like there. I could do this all day long, trying to get it perfect. It's good enough for now. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. Okay. Uh, so we have our four buttons here on the screen. Now, uh, before we move forward, uh, we need to do two things with our buttons. We're gonna rename these in the timeline, and we also need to adjust the initial state for our summary button. I'll explain that in a moment. Let's go ahead and rename these in the timeline. You know, whenever you're working with something that's interactive in Storyline, something that you're gonna add triggers to, or anytime you have the opportunity to rename something in Storyline, whether it's a object, whether it's a variable, whether it's a slide layer, a scene, or a slide, you wanna rename it and give it a meaningful name. You never know when you might have to come back and retouch the project, or uh, you might pass off the project to another e-learning developer and you'll save them a lot of headache. You'll make them a very happy person if you rename it. Uh, I, you know, The only time I would not rename something is if I was like giving it off to an enemy or something like that. But even then, I don't think I'd wish that upon an enemy. So I'm gonna rename these however I want. You can name them whatever you want. Uh, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna call this first one my module one button. This is my module two button. Oops, module two button and my module three button. And what's this last one? That's not how you spell button, there we go. And then my last one is my course summary. I'll just call this my summary button. 
Again, you can call these whatever you want. They're just meaningful names for me. Okay, cool. We've renamed the items in the timeline. Let's also change that uh, initial state of the course summary button. Remember, when the learner gets to this menu, what I want to have happen is I want them to be able to, or I want them to have to view all three of these items before they can view the course summary. And you remember, I built in that disabled state into the button. So I want this to be disabled by default. I don't want it to be normal. I want it to change normal once they viewed everything. We'll do that here later, once we get into our variables and our triggers. So one of the things that you can do in Storyline with your states is that you can actually change the initial state here. See, initial state is normal. I can actually make the initial state disabled. I can even make it hidden if I wanted to. In this case, I'll make it disabled. And you'll see how it changed the look and feel to that disabled state. Now, if I preview this slide, you will see that, in a moment here, when Storyline chooses to render this slide, all right, here's our menu. We have our buttons with our hover states. Those all look consistent and good. And then we have our disabled state there. So we've set up our buttons, okay? We'll link those together with triggers here in a moment. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and add our icons here. These icons are gonna be the visual indicator to the learner to let them know what you have and have not viewed. And it's also going to indicate to them that the course summary is locked, right? These are all little user interface design tricks that we're using to help our learners navigate our course. So I'll collapse my states panel. I don't need that right now. And let's go ahead and add in some check marks. This is a great opportunity for us to use the content library. If you have Articulate Storyline 360 as part of the Articulate 360 suite, you get access to the content library. It's a repository of online assets, graphics, photos, illustrations, and of course, icons. So I'm just gonna come in here and search check. And I'm just gonna choose a check mark. It doesn't matter what style. I'll just go with this one here, click insert. And we have a check mark and I'm going to make it really tiny, not too tiny, but I wanna put it over here so it's tiny enough so it can be used as our check mark for our menu here. And I'll position it that way. And what I wanna do is I want our check marks to have uh, two states, two looks and feels, two variations. I want one that's kind of grayed out to indicate to the learner that the check mark's there but you haven't earned it yet, right? It'll become earned, it'll become blue once you've earned it. So for the initial normal state, I'm gonna change the fill to this gray color here. And just like with my buttons, I'm setting all this up before I duplicate it. So I'm gonna to go to my states panel and I'm gonna add a state. This is another thing to know about Storyline and working with states. States aren't mutually exclusive when it comes to buttons. You can actually add states to any object in Storyline, except grouped objects, I should say. But just about any other object you can add states to. So I'm gonna edit states and add a custom state here. And I'm going to make a state for complete. How about that, right? What does it look like once they've completed it, once they've earned it, right? I'll click add, and now I'll just change the style of it. I'm gonna change the shape fill to that blue color. So that's what it'll look like once they've visited that section. Otherwise, it'll be that grayed out color, all right? So I've set up, uh, I've set up that, that check mark. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that, copy and paste. We will put that down here. I'm gonna align and distribute these anyway, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and let's go ahead and select those, align to the center, and evenly distribute, and they look perfect. Great. So we have our check marks. Let's also add our lock icon, and then we'll rename these in the timeline as well. So I'm going to go to insert. Let's do another icon. This time we'll do lock. And we're going to do, uh, it doesn't matter which one. Let's do this one here. All right. Select that. Click insert and I'll change the shape fill of that to blue. It could be any color you want. And I'll also make that tinier here. And I'm gonna put it down here. That's still a little too big, right? Make it a little bit tinier. I think that's fine. And in this instance, you know, there's a couple different ways I could do this. I could make it that the lock icon's there and then once they visited everything, the lock icon disappears, right? Or if I wanted to, if I wanted to get real fancy, I can make it so it looks like the lock icon is quite literally unlocked, right? Why not do that? So if I wanna do that, uh, I can add another custom state. So we have normal, and then we'll do edit states, and we'll add a new state, and we'll call it unlocked. Click add. And in this instance, what I need to do is I need to actually insert a new icon into the state. And that's another thing you can do with states in Storyline, is you can actually add other objects into states. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to insert and add another icon, and we're gonna search for unlock see what comes up. 
And we're gonna try to find one that looks similar to this one. I think this one looks pretty similar. We'll go with this one. I'll click insert. And you can see it's over here. It's way too big, so I'm gonna change the fill color. And let's see what size this one is. This one is 14 by 18. Let's just change this to be that. Let's do 14 by 18. And we're gonna position it just so it's ever so close to this one. We'll delete that one. And then I'm just gonna put this in its place, right? And we'll put it right about there. And I'll click done editing state. So let's see what that looks like. So we have our normal state, our unlocked. Normal, unlocked, normal, unlocked. Good, okay. So we have our check marks. They're grayed out. We added states to those. We also have our lock uh, icon and we added a custom state to that. Now let's rename these in the timeline as well because eventually we're gonna be creating triggers for these and icon one, two, and three, and four isn't very descriptive. So we'll call this one our module one check. We'll call this our module two check. We'll call this our module three check. And this last one, we'll just call it our lock icon. Again, you can name these whatever you want. Okay. So let's hit save. I don't want to lose everything that I've done here. So we've essentially designed our menu. We added some buttons. We added some states. We changed the initial state of this learn more button. We added some icons. We added some states and we renamed all this stuff in the timeline. Before we move forward, we should connect all of this, right? We should connect our learn more buttons to our actual uh, modules within our course, right? So what I'm gonna do now is add some triggers to these so that it'll tell the learner or it'll tell Storyline where they go when the learner clicks on one of these buttons. Um, now, again, if you're new to Storyline, check out some of my other how-to workshops on getting started with Storyline where I go into more detail about what triggers are. I'm gonna walk through creating these triggers if you're new to Storyline, um, but I'm not gonna go into the level of detail I would if, if, this, um, if I were teaching, you know, if you're completely brand new to Storyline is what I wanna say. So I'm gonna create a new trigger and uh, triggers are made up of actions and events. What do you want the learner to do and when do you want it to do it? So in this case, I want to jump to a scene. What scene do I wanna to jump to? Well, we're gonna to jump to scene module one, which is technically scene two, but it's module one. I know that's confusing because technically scene one is the introduction, the one we're in. So it's scene two, but it's called module one. Uh, when are they gonna do it? When the user clicks, let's find that our module one button and automatically filled that in. I don't know how I guessed that, but it did. So jump to scene module two or module one when the user clicks the module one button. That's it, click okay. Now I could duplicate these triggers if I wanted to, but I'm a big fan of creating triggers from scratch just because it helps with the repetitive repetitiveness of mastering how to create triggers. So I'm gonna create these from scratch. Create another trigger, jump to scene. We're gonna jump to module two when the user clicks what? My module two button, there we go. Done, click OK, jump to scene, or create a new trigger, jump to scene. What scene are we gonna jump to? Module three, when the user clicks what? Our module three button, and yes, if you're wondering, do I actually do this when I'm working on my own? Yes, I speak out loud when I'm creating my triggers. That's how I make sure I'm doing it right, so you're not crazy if you do that. Uh, okay, create one more, jump to scene. What scene are we jumping to? Our summary and conclusion, when the user clicks what? Our summary button. Very good. Now, I've created my triggers for all that. Now, here's what I want you to see. I'm gonna go back here to story view and see how my story view has changed, how the scene and slide structure is now altered. It's literally connected those buttons to these different scenes. And so it's literally created a nonlinear course. Now, before we preview this, we do have one more thing we need to do. What happens when the learner gets to the end of the module, right? They go through module one, well, they need to go back to the main menu so they can do module two and then back to the main menu to do module three, right? So we do need to, we do need to add triggers at the end of each of these modules for the learner to get back to the menu. Again, we're creating a nonlinear course. So the learner has to go back and forth between our menu and our modules. So I'm gonna open up the last slide here in each module. And what I've done is I've created a simple button here. It says return to main menu. Uh, and so when the learner gets to the end of the module, they'll click this, go back to the menu. So just as I did before, I'm gonna create a trigger on these. And I'll tell Storyline we're gonna to jump to a slide because we're jumping to a specific slide, our menu. Jump to a slide. What slide are we jumping to? Our main menu, that's slide 1.2. When the user clicks, return to main menu button. Easy peasy. And I gotta do that with my other ones too. So I'll go to the end of 
Module 2, which is slide 3.5 here. Create a trigger, jump to slide, main menu. When the user clicks what? Our return to menu button. Perfect. And I'll do the same thing for my third one. Jump to slide or create a trigger, jump to slide, main menu. What are they gonna jump to? Main menu when they click the return to menu button. Click OK. Perfect. Now if we go to story view, you'll see here we have that little line indicating that it's gonna go back to that. So we've, we've created a menu. Now what about the summary and conclusion slide? Now I actually just have a button here that says exit course. I already added that trigger there. So it just exits the course once they've done that because I've already built some of this out. So we don't need to worry about that. Now technically, if I'm being honest with you, I could stop here. My menu functions technically. If I preview the entire project, uh, everything's linked together. The learner can jump in between the different menus and all that stuff. But what it's not doing currently, as you'll see here when Storyline decides to preview my course, is that it is not tracking what the learner has and has not viewed. So if I go through module one here, it's gonna go through it just like I built. Uh, and I can go through module one. Look, oh, look at these happy people. These are our customers, they're cool. Uh, module one complete, return to main menu and we're back at the main menu, but you know, our check mark hasn't changed. If I were to go through these, none of this would change. Um, and right now I can't do the learn more button because it's disabled, so that doesn't work. So the menu functions technically, and I could technically stop here. I'd probably have to change this course summary button to make that work. But like I said, it's not tracking what the learner uh, has and has not viewed, and we can't control the navigation based off of that. If we want to do that though, we have to use variables, all right? Now, if you're new to variables, let me give you my quick explanation of variables. But of course, I do have another how-to workshop on getting started with variables, and I'll link to that up here or down there. You'll find it. Um, variables in Storyline are like a brain. They're like a little memory where you can store information that you want to remember uh, throughout your course. And in Storyline, there are several different types of variables. There are text variables, number variables, and true-false variables. Text variables are... Uh, like a memory a brain where you can store text information. For example, let's say you have the learner type in their name at the beginning of a course and you want to remember their name so that you can display it uh, later in the course, maybe as part of a branching scenario. You can use a text variable to do that, to capture the learner's name and then display it. You need a variable to remember their name. You can use a number variable for number information, right? Maybe you want the learner, maybe you have a course where they're setting up a budget and they have to enter in their monthly income and their expenses and it does math, right? You can do that in Storyline with number variables. You can add and subtract and multiply numbers or you can use a slider or a dial, which requires a number variable as well. Uh, and in this instance, what we're gonna be using are true false variables. That's the third type of variable. And this example that we're going through today, building a custom menu, in my opinion, is probably the most commonly used, um, the most common use for a true false variable in Storyline. Unlike a text variable or a number variable, which can have any sort of value of text or numbers, a true false value variable can only be true or false. It only has two options. It's either true or false, on or off, yes or no, okay? The reason we're gonna use a true-false variable today is because we're tracking, have they viewed module one? Yes or no, true or false. Have they viewed module two? Yes or no, true or false. Have they viewed module three? True or false, right? And we can ask, we can create that uh, programming, if you will, that functionality to track uh, that information and then change the states of our check marks, our lock button, our lock icon, and our learn more button based off the value of those variables, okay? So in this instance, we need to create three variables because we're tracking three different bits of information. Have they viewed module one? Have they viewed module two? Have they viewed module three? That's three questions, three things we're tracking. So we need three variables, okay? Let me show you how to create variables. It's super easy. Uh, so here in my triggers panel, we have our variables uh, button up here. It's the button in the topper, upper, topper, the upper right corner of your triggers panel. I click on it, and this is where I can see all my project variables. I don't have any because I haven't created any. So if I want to create a variable, all I have to do is click my green plus icon, and I have this window where I can create my variable. And I have to tell Storyline what do I want to name the variable, what type of variable is it, and what's the default value, and I'll explain that in a moment. So for the name, again, give it a meaningful name. We're starting with module one. So we're gonna say, this is going to be our mod one viewed variable. Again, we're asking, has it been viewed? You can name it whatever you want. Now you'll notice I'm not putting any spaces in the name of my variable for reasons that 
don't really matter. You can't add spaces to the names of variables. So I usually capitalize the first letter of each word, or you can add underscores uh, if you want to like that. It's totally up to you. I think this is just the simplest way to do it. Now, in terms of the type of variable, we have text, number, true, false. In this instance, true, false, right? Because we're asking, is it true or false? Now, what's the default value? The default value can be true or false. What's the setting we want it to be set at initially? Well, in this instance, we're going into it assuming they haven't viewed anything yet, right? Because when the learner starts the course, they have not viewed anything until they do. So it's going to be false. And then it will become true once they viewed module one, because that's the thing that we're tracking. That's the question we're asking. So module one viewed true, false with the default value of true. Done. Let me create two more. Mod two viewed. What type of variable is it? True, false with the default value of false. Cool beans. Add one more. Mod three viewed true false value with the default value of false. Okay, cool. Oops, look what I did here. I accessed the default value of that to true. We need that to be false. Okay, I have my three variables now. Now I have three memories, three brains where I can track each of these modules individually. So we created our variable. That's the first step whenever you're working with variables. The second step when you're working with variables is you always, 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 always have to adjust the variable. And in Storyline, the way you adjust variables 99.9% .9 of the time outside of a few very specific instances that we're not talking about today, the way that you adjust and change the value of a variable is always with triggers, okay? I'm gonna click Save here. Now, this is an important decision you have to make as a designer, as a developer, when you're creating something like this. You have to ask yourself, when do I want the variable change. What action does the learner need to take in order for it to change from false to true, indicating to myself or indicating to Storyline that they viewed it? What's the threshold? Do I tell Storyline change the variable from false to true when they click the learn more button? I could do that, but does it mean that they've actually viewed that section? No, not really. Um, do I change it from false to true once they get to the first slide in the module? I could, but it doesn't really mean they've gone through it all, right? We still have all these other slides. In this instance, in this example, where I want it to change from false to true is when they get to the last slide. And more specifically, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it when they click on the return to main menu button. So when the learner's gone through the whole module, they get to the end, they click on the return to main menu button, that's the action I want to take in order to change it from false to true, okay? Now, Pause here, asterisk, keep in mind, it doesn't mean that learning has occurred. Just because you're doing this, it doesn't mean the learner sat through and learned everything. They might have viewed it, they might have clicked through it, but it doesn't mean learning has occurred. Don't get yourself stuck in this trap where you believe that if you lock down a course, that the learner's just gonna go, oh my gosh, it's locked down. I guess I'm just gonna really hunker in here and learn. No, it doesn't do that. They're gonna multitask. They're gonna play Candy Crush. You know, if you lock down your course to such an extent, they have to view everything in a particular order, right? So again, keep in mind, results may vary. We're just learning how to do the functionality here. It's a whole separate debate about whether or not you should or should not be locking down your courses. Okay, so let's return. <laughs> what do we wanna do? We wanna change the value of the variable when the learner clicks the return to main menu button. The way we do that is with a trigger. So I'm gonna create a trigger on this slide. And I'm gonna tell Storyline to adjust a variable that is down here towards the bottom. Adjust variable. What variable are we adjusting? We're setting the module one viewed variable. It automatically pulled that up because it's the first variable in my project variables that I created. We're gonna set it to the value of true. It automatically did that for me. Great, made some assumptions. Adjust variable, set module one the value of true. When, when user clicks, what are they gonna click on? The return to main menu button. So when they click that return to main menu button, we want it to change the value of that to true. Cool. Let's do that for the rest of our slide. So here's our module two complete screen. Same thing, create a trigger. We're going to adjust a variable. What variable are we adjusting? Module two viewed to the value of true. When the user clicks the return to main menu button, good, click okay. Let's do the same thing for this last one, module three. Uh, create a new trigger, adjust variable. Module three viewed, set it to the value of true when user clicks the return to main menu button. Done. Okay, we've created variables. We've adjusted the variable. Now, before we move forward, I wanna make sure that's working, okay? If I were to preview this though, I wouldn't really know that it's working. 
because variables are changing in the background. I can't actually see it happening right now, but I can see it if I want to by adding a reference to my screen. One thing I recommend that you do if you're ever working with variables is that you wanna make sure they're doing exactly what you want them to be doing before you move forward. Because if I were to move forward and start creating triggers to change the state of these check marks or the learn more button, I'd find myself, and, it, and if it didn't work, I'd have to figure out is it the state's not working, is the trigger's not working, is the variable not working? So you wanna test, QA yourself, see if it's broken as you move forward. Now, because triggers are changing in the background, the only way for me to actually see that it's working in this instance, the best way, is by adding a reference. And I do this all the time when I'm working with variables. References allow you to literally display the value of the variable on the screen. Now, there's a lot of different uses for references. Um, in this instance, I'm just using it for myself. But you might use a reference, again, if you want to display the learner's name. They have to type in their name in a text variable, display it on the screen. Go, oh, hey, Tim, welcome to this course. Or congratulations, Tim, you completed the course. You could do that. You can use a reference for that. In this instance, I'm just using a reference to show me the value of the variable so I can see that it's changing. You'll see what I mean here. So let me add a reference. It's a two-step process. The first thing I'm going to do is insert a text box. Okay. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'm just going to draw a text box here. Oops, let's try that again text box. There we go. I'm going to draw a text box. And while it's there waiting for me to type in information, I'm going to go back to my insert tab and select the option for reference here. It's to the right of the text box option. And this is where I can choose what variables I want to insert. So I'm going to insert module one. It says false. And I'll explain that here in a moment. I'll do another reference for module two and one more reference for module three. So what this is doing, this is these little placeholders, it's quite literally showing me the value of that variable, okay? And now I can actually see, are my variables changing the way I expect them to? Let's find out. I'm gonna preview the entire project. Give it a moment here. Okay, so we'll click the start button here. Okay, here's our menu. They're all false, that's what they should be because I haven't gone through anything yet, right? So let's go through the first one here. Next. Cool. I'm learning. This is awesome. Okay. Now when I return to main menu, should it be true? Hmm. See, it didn't change the true. It's still false. But I had a trigger that told it to change it to true, right? Let's try the second one. See if that one's broken too. Da, 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 da. Let's go back to module two or back to the main menu. It's still false. Let's try the third one. I'm just going to click through this real quickly. Learn, 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 return to main menu, and it's still false. What the heck's happening? Well, I will tell you, the first time I encountered this, I spent hours, if not days, trying to figure out why is it not working. I mean, if I were to go to the trigger, let's go to the this slide, these slides here where I have the, the trigger. It says set module one to the value of true when the user clicks return main menu button. I would stare at that for hours and go, what's not right about that? It should be working. Well, this is a very specific thing you need to know about triggers and storyline. And this is one specific use case where this little nuanced rule comes into play that nobody ever tells you. In storyline, there is a logic and there is meaning to the way triggers are ordered in your trigger panel. One thing nobody tells you about storyline is that when storyline executes triggers in the triggers panel, it does them in order from top to bottom. All right, so trigger order matters in a couple of really specific instances. 99.95% of the time, it may not matter for you. But this is one instance where it is, and let me explain why. Look at what's happening here in our triggers. We jump to slide 1.2 when the learner clicks the return to main menu button, then it's set to set the module one variable equal to the value of true when the user clicks the return to main menu button. Because the triggers are firing in order, they never get to fire this one. It jumps to slide 1.2 before it ever gets to this one. So it never gets a chance to fire that trigger because it's already left the slide. So this is an instance where we need to put this trigger, setting and adjusting the variable to the value of true, before it leaves the slide. So it's going to set it to true, then it leaves the slide, right? Nobody tells you this stuff. I did, so you can thank me later. I promise you'll encounter this. You'll go, oh my gosh, Tim reminded me. The trigger order matters. You may not appreciate it now, but you will. Adjusting trigger order is really simple. I'll select the trigger, click the up arrow, now it's above it. I fixed it. I literally spent days one time trying to figure that out and I discovered maybe it's the trigger order. What are these little arrow buttons here? I never even thought like maybe that does something. 
Now let's give it a preview, let's see if it works. So I did that with all three of those slides, by the way, for all of those, um, the module complete slides, so that's adjusting all of my variables. Okay, so let's go through it. Here's our menu, they're false, that's what they're supposed to be. Let's go through our customers, great. Learning, learning, learning. Module one, oops, go back here. I'll click return to main menu, now it should be true. Hey, look, it's true, it changed. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, module two, blah, 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 learn, learn, learn. Return to main menu, hey, it's true. Now let's do module three. Click here, learn, 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 learn some more. Uh, we'll put that there, cool, that's fun. We're gonna learn some more, return to main menu. Hey, they're true, they all work. Our variables are working. That's fantastic, all right. Now we have a couple more things we need to do. We created a variable to track what the learner is viewing. Uh, and we, had, we figured out how to adjust the variable properly when they click that return to main menu button. Now we gotta put that into use. Technically, we're not using it yet. That's the third thing you have to do with variables is you have to use it. And the way we're gonna use it in this instance is we're going to tell Storyline when the module one variable is true, which is this one, we wanna change this check mark to that blue state, that, that visited state. When number two, module two variable is true, we're gonna change that one and this one and that one, right? So we're gonna change those. And then once all, th all of those are true, we're going to change this lock to unlock and we're gonna re-enable our learn more button and our menu will work, all right? So I'm gonna close out the preview. I don't need my reference anymore on my main menu. That was just for testing purposes. It did its job. My variables work, we're good. Now what we need to do is we need to create a series of triggers to make all of this work. So let's start by creating triggers for our check marks. This is also gonna create uh, require a series of triggers. So I'll create a new trigger. We're going to tell Storyline to change the state of, because that's what we're doing with our check marks, we're changing their state. Change the state of what? Uh, module one check, that's why it's so important we rename those, module one check to the state of complete, that was our built-in custom state, change it to complete. When, are the, when is it gonna happen? In this instance, it's gonna be when the timeline starts on this slide. What that means, when the timeline starts in this slide, it just means when the learner gets here. So they'll have left here when they go to the view the module, and then when they click on module one, return to main menu, they come back. It just means when they come back here, when timeline starts on this slide. But we're not gonna do that unless we have a condition. A condition allows us to add conditions to the trigger. It'll only execute this trigger if a condition has been met. And in this case, the condition is if our module one viewed variable is equal to the value of true. So change the check mark to complete, it'll make it blue. When the timeline starts on the slide, so when the learner gets here, if the variable for it is equal to true, okay? Click okay. Now in this instance, I'll create one more trigger and then I'll duplicate it for the last one just so I can show that. Let's do it one more time. Create a new trigger, change state of, this case it's gonna be the module two check, right? Module two check to the state of complete. When the timeline starts on the slide, so when the learner gets here, on the condition that our module two viewed variable is equal to true. Done. Cool. I'll duplicate it. So this is a time-saving tip in Storyline. Copy and paste the trigger. Cool. We're going to change the state of our module 3 check to complete. When timeline starts on the slide, if our module 3 variable is equal to the value of true. Okay. That should work. But let's do our lock and our learn more button before we do that. So let's decide when we need to change the learn more button. Again, that's gonna be a trigger. And in this case, we're gonna change it from the lock to unlock state uh, when all of our variables are equal to the value of true. So that's gonna be another trigger here. So change the state of what? Our lock icon, here's that. Again, renaming helps me with that. To the state of what? Unlocked, that was our custom built in state we made. Uh, when the timeline starts in the slide, so when the learner gets here, on the condition that all of these variables are equal to true. This is another cool thing you can do in Storyline with conditions. You can add multiple conditions. You can do and or or statements. We're gonna say when module one viewed is equal to the value of true, and we're gonna do if our module two variable and is equal to true, and if our module three variable is equal to the value of true. So when all three of these are equal to true. So change data lock icon to unlock when timeline starts on the slide if these are all true. Click okay. Same thing for our learn more button, okay? One more, one more trigger. Change state of our summary button, where's that? There it is. 
uh, to the state of normal, because it's currently disabled, when the timeline starts on the slide on the condition that module one is equal to the value of true, and if module two is equal to the value of true, and if module three is equal to the value of true as well. Fantastic. Click OK. Now I know that seems like a lot of triggers. And if you're new to Storyline, that's like makes your head spin, all those triggers. You just take it one little step at a time. You don't try to create it all at once. You just build it one bit of functionality at a time, all right? So we created our menu, right? We made, uh, we added states to our buttons and to our icons, and then we linked our buttons to the slides. That was the first bit of functionality. Then we wanted to be able to track with variables, so we added that and we troubleshooted that. And then we changed the state of it. We didn't try to do that all at once. We did it in stages, working up and adding more complexity as we went on, okay? So let's see if it all works. Let's go ahead and preview the entire project. And we should have a menu that fully functions. In a minute here. <laughs> okay, customer service 101, start. Cool, here's our menu. We have our sections are locked. I can't view the course summary. It doesn't matter what order I go in. So let's start with service philosophy. Hey, look at this, we're servicing people. That's cool. Wow, look at that customer journey. Mm, I had no idea about that stuff. I'm learning. Okay, module two complete, return to main menu. Hey, look, there's our check mark. It worked. Let's go learn about our customers. And look at these happy customers. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at them. Oh, they flew in. Oh, wow. Helen looks nice. She seems cool. Uh, we have some more customers here. None of this really matters, right? Uh, continue. Hey, we finished that. Congratulations. Let's return to module. Uh, return to the main menu. Hey, it works. So when I go through this section, we should unlock all this here. So let's go build some rapport. Look at them building rapport. They're laughing, having a good time on their laptop. Oh, look, let's shake hands in a really cool open office environment. Oh, a checklist. Okay, that's cool. Um, oh gosh, let's get it wrong this time. Uh-oh, that's not right. That's okay. We're just going to move forward. And we learned how to build rapport. Return to main menu. Hey, look at that. Okay, it's unlocked. We can learn more. And now we can finish the course. Look, we learned about customer service 101. Exit the course. And now we're back here. All right. That's how to build a custom menu in our ticket storyline using buttons and states and triggers and variables and all of that cool stuff. All right. Like I said, this is really good if you want to create your own custom on-screen navigation. Maybe you need to control a little bit of how much the learner navigates through the course. Don't lock it all down, but it's okay to, you know, there's a happy medium between locking everything down and keeping the course open, but locking down certain parts of it. And that's a good use case for this. And it's a great way to learn more about true false variables and buttons and states, all that cool stuff. All right, so I hope you learned a lot. Thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned at the top of the video, if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, make sure to click that like, subscribe, and that bell button, and you'll get alerted the next time I publish a video just like this one. And of course, join me inside the e-learning designers community where you can learn, connect, and network with a bunch of other people who are also like you, wanting to build their skills and their careers in all things e-learning and instructional design. All right, thank you so much for watching today's how-to workshop, and until next time, my name is Tim Slade, and I'll see you around.